Our nation is in so much upheaval due to international issues and social divide. We're living in a time where oppression can feel like a heavy burden, even on our very souls. Whether it shows up as systematic inequality, societal unfairness, or individual acts of oppression, the reality is these troubles persist in various forms. In this episode of the Midweek Refill, we'll continue with part five of our series entitled For Such a Time as This from the Book of Esther. This week, we'll discuss part five, Standing Against Injustice. I'm Bishop Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. Well, hello there. Welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. Be sure to like, comment, and do subscribe. In this powerful teaching, we embark on a journey to understand the divine call to champion justice for righteousness. And as we navigate the intricate paths of this crucial topic, we uncover the indispensable role of standing against injustice and oppression as followers of Jesus Christ. It's important that we take a stand for justice and righteousness, because in the world that we live in today, the burdens of injustice and oppression can press heavily on our spirits. Whether it manifests itself as systematic inequality or societal injustice or simply individual acts of oppression, the truth remains that these afflictions persist in diverse ways. As believers, it is imperative that we confront these adversities with divine insight, compassion, and hearts that are unyielding in their determination. Friends, the story of Esther is about facing injustice head on. Esther, who is chosen as queen, now takes a bold move in approaching her new husband, King Xerxes, without being summoned. This was a deed that literally could have cost her her life, even though she was queen and wife. No one had the right to approach the king on any matter without permission or being summoned. And yet Esther chooses to approach her husband and the king on behalf of her people as a true testament to what bravery looks like. She shows us unwavering faith and a steadfast determination. Esther and her people faced grave danger in Esther chapter 6 and chapter 7 due to the nefarious plots of Haman, a high-ranking official in the Persian court. Haman harbored a deep-seated animosity for the Jewish people, and he cunningly devised a plan to annihilate the Jews. In Esther chapter 3, Haman convinces King Xerxes to issue a decree ordering the destruction of all Jews throughout the Persian Empire. This decree put Esther and her people in imminent peril as they faced the threat literally of a mass extermination simply because of their ethnicity. In Esther chapter 7, the danger reaches a critical point as Esther, risking her own life, approaches King Xerxes to intercede on behalf of her people. She reveals Haman's wicked scheme to the king and pleads for him to intervene and to spare the Jews from destruction. So Esther and her people's lives were in jeopardy because of the malicious intent of Haman and the decree issued by King Xerxes under his influence. It was only through Esther's courageous intervention and God's providential guidance that they were ultimately saved from this grave threat. 
Let's look at Esther chapter 7, verse 1 through 4, at this amazing encounter between the king and the queen. And it reads like this. So the king and Haman came to Esther's banquet. Again, during the wine course, the king asked her, What is your petition, Queen Esther? What do you wish? Whatever it is, I will give it to you, even if it is half of my kingdom. And at last, Queen Esther replied, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it please your majesty, save my people and the lives of my people. For I and my people have been sold to those who will destroy us. We are doomed to destruction and slaughter. If we were only to be sold as slaves, perhaps I could remain quiet. Though even then, there would be incalculable damage to the king that no amount of money could begin to cover. And this scene literally encapsulates Esther's readiness to confront injustice head-on despite facing immense personal danger. Her heartfelt plea is a reminder of the impact using our own voices to champion the cause of those who are oppressed and marginalized can have. Esther's story resonates deeply with the wisdom of Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9. There we find these powerful words. You should defend those who cannot help themselves. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. This powerful passage encourages us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Well, Esther's actions align perfectly with this call to advocate for the vulnerable and the oppressed, emphasizing the timeless importance of raising our voices in the face of injustice. As we wrap up this insightful lesson, let's ponder on some practical avenues through which we can champion justice and righteousness in our own everyday lives. The timeless story of Esther resonates deeply, reminding us of our own divine mandate to confront injustice, uplift the marginalized, and embody righteousness in our own spheres of influence. Mordecai's unwavering stand and Esther's courageous plea before the king serve as beacons illuminating the path for us to take concrete actions toward fostering injustice and righteousness in our own communities. And whether it's lending our voices to the oppressed, advocating for fairness and equality, or earnestly addressing systematic inequalities. Let our dedication to these noble principles shine through our deeds. Now let's engage in a moment of introspection. Consider the opportunities that lie before you, be it in your workplace, your social circles, your local organizations, or even the digital realm. Where can you actively promote justice, and righteousness. Embrace these opportunities with the purpose and zeal that God would be pleased with, knowing that each step taken brings us closer to realizing a world where justice and righteousness do prevail. Well, I certainly hope that you have gotten something out of this week's episode of the Midweek Refill. There is so much more in the lesson, which is linked below in the description box. Please be sure to check out the description box below to access the link to the full notes of this study, 
much I did not have an opportunity to even get to, but it includes thought-provoking questions to help you take a deeper dive into the book of Esther. And guess what? This week, I'm going to wrap up our session, but in this week's notes, I'm including part six. That way, you get the full conclusion of this wonderful, powerful, amazing story of Esther. So be sure to get the link and download the PDF. By the way, it is free 99, cost you nothing. Go get it and share it and read it and take advantage of the reflection questions that will help you to grow in your faith for such a time as this. I'm Bishop Littman. You're watching the Midweek Refill. We'll be back week after next with a brand new series. God bless you. God be with you and stay with God. Until next time, you go with God.